In this lesson, we'll learn how to build this interaction in Webflow, where it also works with the tab key when the user tabs into different cards, and when the user increases their font size enough, it'll eventually just disable the interaction without anything being tied to Webflow breakpoints. To get started, let's add a div with the class of benefits wrap, since this will be the start of our whole component. In that, we'll add a div with the class of layout, We'll apply flex to stack the cards side by side with a gap of one rim. In that layout, we'll add a div with the class of card wrap. And here we want some padding of one rim on all sides, a width of 100%, position relative, and an overflow hidden with a border radius so it crops everything to these rounded corners. Now in that, we'll add an image with a class of image and we'll choose one from here. And we want the height of our card to be based on the height of the text, not based on the height of this image. So we'll give the image position absolute to cover the full card with a height of 100%. And inside that card, we'll add a div with the class of content. Now in this content, I'll add an image with the class of icon, and we can choose one here. And let's go ahead and set a width. Now what we'll notice here is our content is underneath our absolute image. So we'll give the content position relative so it's on top. And now in here, we can add a div with the class of header. And we'll go ahead and add an H3 since our section title would be the H2. We'll go ahead and give this a class of title and we'll change out its text and we'll reduce its font size a little bit. So once we have that set, we'll select the whole card and let's change its background color over to black. We'll change its text color over to white and then we'll select this image here and we'll go ahead and reduce its opacity to 80%. Now we want to animate the height of the paragraph from zero to a height of auto. And anytime we're doing that with CSS, we want to use a display grid. So we'll give this a class of mask wrap. We'll set a display grid with one column, one row, and no gap. For our rows, we want to animate from zero FR to a height of one FR, which is its auto height. Now notice how Webflow doesn't allow me to actually get it as low as zero here. So to fix that, we can go under custom properties, apply a grid template row, and we'll go ahead and set that to zero FR. Now, once we have that set, we'll add a div in here and we'll add some paragraph text in that. And notice how this hasn't collapsed in height yet. And that's because the direct child of the grid needs an overflow hidden. So we'll give this a class of mask clip and we'll set that to overflow hidden like so. Now, if we were to add some top padding to this element here, it's not actually gonna let it get collapse all the way. So any space we have to separate the paragraph from the heading should be applied to this text element instead. So I'll add some top padding maybe right here. And we want to smoothly animate this mask. So if we were to apply a transition, we can't apply it to grid template columns directly or rows. So we'll apply it to all properties instead. I'll set a duration here. And now when we animate from zero to one, notice how it smoothly reveals and hides like so. Now I'll go ahead and change the duration to 300 milliseconds and we'll set this to revealed by default. And inside of this, we'll go ahead and add in a button element and let's add some bottom margin to this paragraph text to kind of separate it from the content above and below. And now that we have that set, let's go ahead and duplicate our whole card. Now what happens when some of our cards have different lengths of content is that this button isn't anchored to the bottom of the card like we want it to be. So what we wanna make sure we do is select this content uh, here and we wanna make sure we apply flex. We'll do vertical and space between to push the content away from the icon. But because this content isn't the full height of the card, we need to select our entire card wrap, give it flex vertical as well. And that allows us to select this content and set it to grow if possible. So it just fills all that remaining space. Now we wanna separate the icon and heading. So we'll add a gap of two rim to this content like so. And we can go ahead and delete these cards. We'll go ahead and delete some of this default content and we'll select the entire card and we'll turn it into a component called card. We'll go ahead and select the image and we'll link that to a component field called image. And that way we can change this image out for each instance of our card like so. Now, whenever we have a list of items here, we usually want to use a list element for accessibility, but we can't use that if we're using a component slot to hold these cards. So what we can do instead is add a role of list to this list element and then on each of the children the cards we add a role of list item and that way when screen readers are focused on it it announces how many items are in this list and it's just good for accessibility 
So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and define what we want our default styles to be. So on mobile, we're probably gonna have these stacked under each other by default. We're probably gonna have the paragraph text revealed by default. And then on larger screens, and this is somewhere in between our desktop breakpoints, we wanna stack these side by side. So to do that on this entire wrap, we'll go ahead under custom properties and apply a container type inline size. This allows us to make the breaking point based on the width of this div here. And whenever we apply this, we can affect the style of any children inside the container type. So this layout, and I'll go ahead and just add on a large class here, and I'll go ahead and set these to go side by side. And then we can just go ahead and copy under CSS preview, our large setting here. So I'll copy to clipboard and let's go ahead and remove this because we're not actually going to use it. And we'll add an embed in here and I'll add some style tags. And here we can go ahead and start defining what we want our container width to be. So I'll say at container, we'll say whenever our container width is greater than, larger than 70M for screen size, then we'll go ahead and apply some styles. So we we'll want to select this uh, layout. It's not gonna have a large class. We just did that to copy the styles and we're gonna set its flex direction to row so they can stack side by side. We don't really need this no wrap setting. And so now that we have that set, what we should notice is on larger screen sizes, these elements should go side by side. So if I just zoom out my font size a bit, when the screen size is large enough, they'll go side by side. It looks like um, we might need to reduce this a little bit. So let's try 55 as a good breaking point. There we go. And so now, whenever we zoom in, zoom in, whenever this text starts to get too crammed, they just wrap under each other like so, which is exactly what we want. So we can control the breaking point now. So now that we have that set, we want for our desktop view to add some animations. First thing we're gonna do is select this card and we'll say whenever we're hovering it, we're gonna start increasing the width of it some so it pushes the other cards further away. And on the entire base class, we want to make sure we have a transition applied. So I'll go ahead and do that on this card and we'll transition the entire width of this card and we'll say over 300 milliseconds. So that way it smoothly animates to the wider state like so. Now, I only want that style to actually happen on uh, our larger screen size. So instead of applying the hover like we've done here to width, we'll make sure that it's applied inside of our custom code. So I'll just copy this card wrap and we'll go ahead and say for our larger screen size, the card wrap, whenever we're hovering it, we want to give it a width and we'll say 140% or something like that and save it. And that should make it to where it just makes the other cards smaller. Now, also we want the height of this, um, sort of the height of this mask here to be collapsed in our desktop view, but we want it to be open in our mobile view. So we'll leave it open by default, 1FR, and we'll come back to our embed, and we'll say in this larger view here, we'll go ahead and select the mask, and we'll go ahead and set its grid template rows to 0FR only in this view. So if we save that, it's completely collapsed in this view, but in the other view, it's open. Now we want to be able to animate this to 1FR whenever we're hovering over this entire parent. So whenever we hover over the entire card, like we're doing here, then we want to select this mask uh, wrap and we want to change it to 1FR. So if we go ahead and save that, now it should just animate to auto height. Now notice how these cards are getting taller whenever we do this and we want their height to more or less be the same. So on the entire card, we also want to give it just that base class, not even on hover. Within this desktop view, we want to give it a min height. And we'll go ahead and say of something like 25 rim, we can play with that value some. So that way the cards are always at least this tall and the content just reveals and makes them a little taller like so. Now, something else we'll want to do is whenever we're hovering this card, we want to fade out all of this content. So we'll give this content a transition applied to opacity, 300 milliseconds, and we'll go ahead and open up this here. So we'll say, we'll, I'll start by duplicating the whole um, sort of benefits wrap, just so we have two of these we can test with. 
And let's go ahead and say, for starters, whenever the body, so whenever the whole page has a benefits card wrap that is being hovered, then we want to find the benefits card wraps inside that are not being hovered. So not hovered. And we'll go ahead for now and just set their opacity to 0.5, just so we can see what this is doing. So if we save this, notice when I hover any card, it grays out every other card on the page. Now we only want to gray out the cards that are inside of this benefits wrap. So, or we'll actually use the whole layout. So I'll copy this layout and we'll go ahead and instead of listening for the whole body, we'll say whenever this layout has a wrap card being hovered, then we're only finding the cards that are not hovered inside of this layout instead of all cards on the page. So if we go ahead and save that, now it's only graying out the siblings of this one card. So we've localized that a little bit. So now what we want to do is instead of graying out or fading the opacity of the entire card inside the ones that aren't being hovered, we only want to fade out the opacity of this content div where we set that CSS transition. So we'll come back over here to our embed and right here, we'll say inside of this cards that are not being hovered, we'll find the content div inside of those and we'll turn their opacity to zero. So if we save that now, it should just fade out the opacity of the content inside of those other cards like so. I might increase the width of these cards now since the content's being fade out, faded out. We can maybe say 160 to make it a little bit more extreme. Um, might even go larger than that. We can say 180 or 90. Um, let's just see what that looks like. And so that's pretty good there. We're reducing the size of those cards and everything is looking nice. Uh, one other thing I might do is on this text, let's go ahead and give it a text wrap balance. That's just good to have across all of them. Um, it keeps the text nicely, wrapping nicely, even on larger uh, sizes like that. And what's great about this is our breaking point is somewhere here. It's actually on tablet. So first on tablet, it's side by side, but halfway through tablet, it switches and it stacks under and everything goes back to normal. All the layouts are stacked under each other and that is good to go there. So one issue we'll, we'll run into here, and I'll go ahead and delete the other benefits wrap now, is whenever a uh, user is tabbing with their tab key, see how they're focused on the button, but they can't see the content that they're focused on. If I keep hitting tab, now I'm focused on this next one, I can't see it. Um, and that's the problem whenever we use Webflow interactions is we can only link these to hover, we can't link our interactions to focus. So the great thing about using custom code for this is instead of saying just when we're hovering on this card, we can uh, use two selectors. So we'll say is, and we'll say this card wrap whenever we're hovering on it or whenever we have focus within. So whenever we're focused on an element inside of this card. So now if I go ahead and save this, notice as soon as I tab into the card, it's, it makes it wider even without me hovering on it because I'm just focused within that card. So all we need to do is change each of our selectors here. Anywhere that we had hover, we wanna change that to hover or focus within. So it works with either one. And then same thing, we'll say whenever we're, we have a card that's being hovered or focused within, we want to grab all other cards that are not hovered or focused within. And then we'll go ahead and save that. So if we test this out, I can tab into this card, it hides the others like so and I can still hover onto an individual card to reveal it. So it, it works with tab and hover, and that really just helps improve the accessibility of this component some. So I hope this tutorial helps you in learning how to build accessible components that respect the user's font size and still have some nice interactions to them.